Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and this is set number 75330, Dagobah Jedi Training Diorama from the LEGO Star Wars theme. This set contains 1,000 pieces, 3 minifigures, and will retail for $79.99 in the US. This set will not come out until April 26, 2022, but it was sent to me earlier by the LEGO group through the LEGO Master Network, while opinions expressed this video are my own. Before I get started, I just want to ask real quick if you guys could please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm doing early reviews of all three of the new LEGO Star Wars diorama sets, as well as early Jurassic World reviews coming very soon, and a lot of other fun stuff down the line. So if you're interested in all that and would like to see more, subscribe to the channel and you'll get it right in your sub box. But now let's get on to the review. So here is the Dagobah Jedi Training Diorama, and aesthetically, this set has such a cool look to it. It really encapsulates that swampy feel. The white background that I have behind this probably isn't the best for showing it off, but if you have like brown or black behind it like on a shelf, this would look fantastic. Even still, in this lighting, it does look amazing. So let me just take you through each individual aspect of it. So on the right side, it is mostly just swamp. There is so many one by one trans green tiles in this set. And while they weren't the most fun to put onto this build, I actually didn't mind it and I think the end result is absolutely gorgeous. They use different colored bricks underneath the trans green to create like a different look. They use different colored bricks underneath the trans green to give like the illusion of depth. And I think that looks absolutely fantastic. It's really funny though, when you're building this set, all these trans green pieces are in pretty much one bag and there's a step where it just says put 177 of them on. But as someone who has built all three Ninjago City sets, they do that with the water in those sets, so I was kind of used to it. So only 177 didn't seem too bad. <laughs> but yeah, you can see also over here we have the Wing of Luke's X-Wing coming out of the ground. And that's of course to represent the fact that it was submerged in the swamp, and Luke has to try to get it out using the force. I really like how they did the swampy water around it too, where it's like bubbling and whatnot. It adds like the illusion of movement to the set, and I feel like it makes it a lot more immersive. You can also see there's a little bit of wiggle in the X-Wing, you can't actually like pose it in any other ways, but you can make it shake a little bit to look like it's being picked up by the force, which is kind of fun. And yeah, you can see behind that there's some more ripples and whatnot just to add some life to the lake. Lots of foliage all throughout, there's four or five different types of plants. You have these brown plant stalks, you have two of them stacked on top of each other, two of them stacked on top of each other with this minion hairpiece at the top. I still find it so funny that piece was introduced as a hairpiece for one of the LEGO minions, and now it's being used as just foliage in a really beautiful LEGO Star Wars set. That's really really funny. There's also the larger bush pieces in dark orange, and finally these olive green plant pieces. Those are littered all over the set and again add a lot of life to just the terrain here. Really feels straight out of the movie and in fact the thing it reminded me most of was like the levels from Lego Star Wars 2. When you're actually on Dagobah, this is what it felt like. Obviously, the building techniques have improved a lot since that video game, but I still get the vibes of that game from this set, and I think that's a very, very good thing. Now getting onto land, you can see right now I have R2 here, but I can remove him. And you can see behind him there's two crates. One has this little light at the top, the other one has a lantern. The crates aren't actual crates, they're just 2x2 two two bricks, so there's nothing inside them. Then moving a little bit more, you can see this is where you have Luke standing upside down. You can move this wherever you want, though, he's just posed on top of this transclear piece. But that's supposed to represent him turned upside down, meditating using the force. But yeah, you can see with him removed, you have more places to pose figures. And then around the rest of the front, just more terrain places to pose figures. I do like how varied it is with all the curves and angles and whatnot. I think it looks quite good overall. Then moving on to Yoda's hut itself, this is like built into the tree and it's really impressive the way this is done. It reminds me a lot of Speed Champions the way that it's like a bunch of different intricate angles and whatnot, but it all comes together to create a really cohesive build, and I'm impressed by how good this looks. You can see there's little windows on the sides, a bit of smoke coming out the other side, and I love the way these roots come down, and then of course there's a little spike at the top. Moving back down to the entrance though, you have this little snake right here coming out. Just a classic Lego snake, very funny inclusion, but I'm really happy we got him here. And this is of course where you'd have the minifigures actually enter the hut. The door is actually not tall enough to fit a minifigure in there, however if you have them duck down they can easily get in. And I believe that is actually accurate to the movie, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong because I haven't seen it in a while, but if I remember correctly I believe both Luke and Yoda have to duck down to get into Yoda's hut. So if so, nice representation of that. Now Yoda's hut is actually open from the back, but this is also the only way to access it. Yoda's hut doesn't come apart or anything to get access from the top, so if you want to like get figures inside here, the back is the only way to do it. But you can see over here, there's Yoda's bed. So if for whatever reason you want to recreate the scene from episode 6 where he uh, dies, you can do that. <laughs> On the other side, there's also a little pot which you can remove. And behind that, I don't know if you can see, but there's some trans orange circular tiles. And those are, I guess, to represent a fireplace where Yoda can cook his food. The pot itself, when removed, if you pour it out, just has some olive green studs in it. And then finally, in terms of detail, you also have Yoda's lightsaber up here, which is a nice touch. Yoda never actually used this lightsaber in the original trilogy, but it's a cool nod to the prequels. I do wish it came with a lightsaber blade, though, because it doesn't. If you have other LEGO Star Wars sets that shouldn't be too hard to replace yourself, but I don't know, it would have been a nice touch to at least include the blade to give him the lightsaber if you wanted to. But yeah, without the blade it's sort of just there as a little nod. 
Oh, also, if you want to display the figures in the hut, Luke can stand in there, but he has to duck a little bit, while well, Yoda can just stand up straight pretty much anywhere, which I believe, again, is accurate to how it was in the movie. So that is a nice touch that they got the heights, like, completely correct. And then the last thing to show you is the tree, which I don't have much to say about, so I'm just really going to show it off. Point is, though, it looks good. I love how they did the leaves, the vines hanging down. It fits the whole swamp vibe, fits the whole Dagobah vibe. And again, I love how it's incorporated directly into Yoda's hut. Incredibly well done. I absolutely love that. And then finally, of course, out front, there's the quote. This is a part of the all-new LEGO Star Wars diorama line. In all of these sets, they have a printed LEGO Star Wars tile as well as an all-new printed tile that has an iconic quote from a character from the scene that the set is based on. So in the case of this set, the quote is, do or do not, there is no try from Yoda. And yeah, I think that is one of, if not the most iconic quote from all of Star Wars. And it's a really nice touch that both these pieces are printed. Especially like a Star Wars title, I feel like you could probably use that in your own creations every now and then. Not a super useful part, but it is somewhat useful and very cool to get it. And if you're curious, here is the entire set from the back. Not as impressive as the front, but still looks alright for the back of a build. There's really no complaints for me here. But that's about it for the main build of this set, so now let's get on to the minifigures and then my overall thoughts. So here are the first two minifigures in the set. We have Luke Skywalker and we have Yoda. These figures are very similar to the ones that came in the Yoda's Het set from a few years ago. Luke is ever so slightly new. He does have the same face front and the same hairpiece. However, his torso is a slightly different design. It's got like more folds at the bottom. And the leg print, again, is slightly different. But visually, the two figures look very similar. Yoda, however, I believe is the same exact one from that set. And I don't think there's been any changes to him here. Regardless of similarities, though, these are two very good figures. I especially like the face print on Luke where he has his eyes closed and he's focusing on using the Force. And the Dagaba outfit for Luke is one we don't get too often in LEGO, so it's always very nice to see it. And it's a good representation of, like, this outfit from the movie. And you can see Yoda is just in his little robes. I like the little speckle designs and how, like, parts of the robe look a little frayed. It fits, like, Yoda's whole personality from Episode 5 and 6. But then, turning these guys around, there you can see their back torso prints. Again, very similar designs. Yoda's got a bit of hair on the back of his head. And then Luke, we take off his hairpiece, there you can see his alternate face, where he's got sort of, like, a shock design. Yeah, both these guys are pretty good, good representations of these characters from this scene. One thing I wish they included was some way to attach Yoda to Luke's back. The $30 Yoda's hut from a few years ago did have something like that, and that's an iconic part of the Dagobah training, so I think that would have been cool if they had some sort of backpack. Not a huge deal if they don't, and it's very easy to customize if you want to make it. But yeah, it just would have been something nice as like an alternative way to display these figures. But yeah, not much else to say about them. Good versions of both of them. And then finally, we have R2-D2, who is also new and exclusive to this set. Just like the Yoda's Hut set from a few years ago, he has this, like, dirty design. I believe the headpiece is directly taken from that side, I don't think anything's new about that piece. And the torso design is very similar overall, where he's just got, like, mud and dirt coming up his body, which is a cool variant in its own right. However, the thing that makes this figure new and exclusive is now, he has backprinting. We get R2-D2 with backprinting in one of the other diorama sets. However, the difference with this one, obviously, is he has the muddy design, and I think this figure is fantastic. The back printing makes it more special than normal R2, and obviously the mud makes it more, like, specific to this scene, and I think it's just great overall, no complaints here. As with a lot of astrobic droids, his printing is a little funny, like, it does go up a little bit higher in the front. A little bit annoying, but not a huge deal to me. And yeah, there's the printing on the top of his head if you're curious. Not much else to say on this guy, but again, really good figure overall. So, what are my overall thoughts on this set? I think this is my favorite of the diorama sets overall. Definitely the best price of the three, and in my opinion, probably the best looking as well. The highlight to me, for sure, is the swamp. I know it's very simple, just a bunch of trans green pieces, but the way they did, like, the artificial depth looks amazing, and the set really just does feel like Dagobah. Could the price be better? Yes, for sure. This would be much better as, like, a $60 or $70 set, because while in terms of price per part is really good, most of the pieces are these little one-by-ones. So I get people complaining about the price, however, the build is a significant size, and the level of detail here is really, really good. It might be a weird comparison, but the set reminds me a lot of the Winnie the Pooh set, so if you guys have that set and you like that set and you're a fan of Star Wars, I think you'll really like this one. Because it's a similar thing where it's not the biggest set in the world, but it's a really high level of detail. But still feels worth the price, if that makes any sense. So yes, I would recommend this set of all the diorama sets. This one's definitely my favorite. Good representation of the scene and just good Lego set overall. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please just like, subscribe if you're new, and let me know which of the diorama sets you want to see next. Do you want to see the Death Star Trash Compactor or the Death Star Trench Rum? Regardless, stay tuned for reviews of those sets coming very, very soon, as well as another video probably going over my thoughts on the diorama line as a whole. But as for this one, I think that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.